Pentagon says China's military capacity in space is on the rise, too. What's more, the report concludes that China is undergoing the most comprehensive restructure in its history to become a force capable of fighting joint operations. In other words, multiple theaters simultaneously. It's a highly questionable right now, given the state that the 44th president left the U.S. military, that the United States could fight in two theaters simultaneously. Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Nussbaum. Uh, Barry, it's clear that there is a Chinese manifest destiny, and that manifest destiny is to expand beyond its borders. We've seen it in the South China Sea. So what the President of the United States is doing by bolstering the military, trying to build up the military, and weaponizing trade and tariffs, I think is the right thing to do right now. It should come as no surprise, Graham, that China does not consider the United States anything but the enemy that prevents them from their place in the world that they rightfully should assume. They've been hacking into our computers, stealing our technology, putting tariffs on our goods, and winning the trade war for decades. It should be no surprise to us that the military uh, advisors to the president are now saying the same thing. Within China, the plans are very obvious and talked about publicly that they consider the only impediment to placing them at the top of the world is the United States of America. So the United United States is doing the right thing to prepare for what may be coming. And, and oh, by the way, the president drove the Chinese back to the bargaining table uh, over tariffs and, and trade. So, you know, he's winning that war without literally firing a shot. Meantime, on Iran, <laughs> there is a new policy, a, a fresh perspective. It's called the Iran Action Group out of the uh, State Department. This is a new policy toward Iran. Of course, the detractors are saying it's going to lead to war. So be it. If, if that happens, you know, at one point, somebody is going to have to take care of these terrorists that run the Iranian state. I find it shocking, Graham, that the reports that are floating around in opposition to Mr. Hook from the State Department being appointed the head of this planning group, nobody mentions the elephant in the room. Since Obama gave them billions uh, to entice the JCPOA to be agreed to, and then hundreds of millions in ransom in the cash plane delivery, Iran has made no secret they spent the money on war. They're exporting terror all over the world. They're still enhancing their nuclear projects. They're still not allowing inspections on, on their military sites where they're developing their nuclear capabilities. And nobody, and I mean nobody, wants to address address that. You know what? Trump is 100% right. Pompeo's 100% right. When Iran backs down from exporting terror and revolution all over the world, maybe then we have something to talk about. But until then, Iran is the avowed enemy of all of Western civilization, all of Christianity, and anybody that opposes their regime, which should be the entire world, and sadly, it isn't. And remember, it was CIA Director John Brennan who played a role in all this, the Obama administration, in terms of uh, cultivating the JCPOA, right? And the left continues to go nuts over the revocation of his security clearance. But hey, there's more to come. There are other shoes to drop here. Uh, you got Comey. Uh, he's an important one who should have been stripped a long time ago, frankly. Um, you've got McCabe, uh, that disgraced uh, former uh, federal official. You've got Strzok, he's obvious, just fired. And you've got this guy, Bruce Orr, who's going to face uh, the music next week in Congress. Uh, several years ago, Graham, I was lucky enough to spend an evening alone with uh, the former director of Central Intelligence, and I asked him the exact question, which is now on everybody's mind, which is, how do you keep politics out of your discussions with the current person sitting in your former role? And what he said to me was, Barry, it's about national security and being a patriot. We don't discuss politics either in those conference rooms or outside to the press ever, ever. And that's the Dems 
and the Republicans. Somehow that rule book got thrown out. Trump is right, Graham. You can't let these people carry out public policy debates with the president in the press and let them have access to top secret information. They can be on CNN, that's fine, but not with secret information in their pocket. Let them go be a pundit, but they give up their clearance if they're gonna shoot their mouths off in the press. There's no two ways about it. You can't have both Trumps right. There, there should be a singular litmus test for a security clearance, a singular litmus test, and that is what is that clearance for that person going to do for us? And with John Brennan, the answer, in my opinion, is a flat zero. Barry, thanks. 